Hello and welcome back to Ment FX. As promised, we are going to take a look at this absurd week that happened with all the GJ trades. Again, I don't usually record absolutely everything I take. I take things on my own sometimes. I share analysis and markups with my group at some points as well, only because there are so many opportunities as you can see and as I've shown this last week on just GJ, right? So this last week I've only traded GJ, only watched all these, right? All the opportunities that we got involved in are available to you and shown to you right here. We're going to look at how we got involved on them and what we did for all this stuff here and also talk about the fractal nature of Wyckoff and how we used Wyckoff every single time to properly trade these areas and understand what we were doing to get involved um, at certain points in this market and partial, right? So again, like I said, um, what you see here, so as a lot of you saw in the last video, we got stopped on this. Well, not stopped, we got trail profited on this, which, you know, it happens, it's fine. Um, and I showed you guys the current weeks um, overall. So I just had my monthly reset on FTMO and I just showed you guys the current weeks um, just from the start of the week's um, trade history, right? Again, you guys don't have to believe this. This is with FTMO, I really don't care. The reality is just learn from the videos if that helps in any way. Okay, so let's get into these fractal Wyckoff distributions that we had occur, that we were expecting, and how we got involved in them every single time, and how they began to fail and invalidate themselves, which were then part of even larger time frame Wyckoff schematics, which let us get into the final trade that we were hoping would run 1 to 80, or whatever it was, wherever that trade is. Um, yeah, this one, that we were hoping would run 1 to 80, but instead ran the 1, 1 to 15 and stopped us out with a trail profit at 1 to 15, right? That's going to happen. But it's also going to show you how I look to manage a lot of my trades. So as we spoke about, if you have not seen yet, watch the previous video for how we got involved in these trades here. Um, as we were expecting, prices to continue bullishly into these areas here. So if you all remember, um, just a quick recap, very quick, we are in a bullish structure on the four hour, right? Expecting prices to come to this area or this area before seeing higher prices. Again, this is not financial advice. This is just my perspective. As we're expecting this to happen because we understand the fundamental logic of how smart money needs to trade in terms of they can't just buy to new highs. They need to sell to buy. They need to sell to buy. That's what we are expecting as we're counter trend trading down into these areas. Fantastic. On the one hour, we had structure finally shift from that bullish to that bearish, expecting it to remain bearish into these areas. As we shift bearish, we have order blocks that are being created on the one hour that are taking liquidity, that are leaving behind imbalances and leaving potential areas of interest where we can look to become sellers to continue the downwards move that will come to liquidate lows here, will come to liquidate lows here, will come to liquidate lows here, and will come to fill the imbalances that rest within these areas to come and potentially fulfill these areas for new Wyckoff setups higher, or to come fill these areas here filling in more imbalances, taking out more liquidity to give us the same white coffee and setups that take our um, positions higher or completely break down and we can start expecting potential bu uh, bearish price action off of the higher time frames. The exact same way that we've been doing everything. So with the expectation this is going to be short, we're going to look for shorts at these areas. Now, as we're looking for shorts at those areas, we are also going to be mindful of the fact that lower time frames are going to shift bullish as we move higher into these areas and that we can be bullish participants at those areas. So as you saw, we had double Wyckoff confirmation off of one minute and off of a 30 and 15 seconds to get involved on this mini play here that ended up being a one to three, but could have been a one to 20. That being said, it's important to remember that the time frames and the stop losses don't matter as long as your strategy can be repeated and is fractal in nature and can be basically um, seen the same way on every single time frame. So that's what we that's what we were getting involved in. And that's why we were trading this way. Now, let's get rid of all of these little things so we don't get too confused as we start to draw this through. But we're gonna talk about what's actually occurring here and how we got involved in all this. So again, remember that we had this entire area basically uh, drawn out where we were expecting sales from. Now, you could have gone further and refined it to a few areas within here where you were also expecting those sales to come from, right? So these were all areas that you could have. So these are all order blocks, perfectly normal, right? The last buy candle before down candle, the last up candle before the down candle. And you could have had all of these denoted and, and drawn out where you could have expected potential sales to come from. Now remember, the lower time frames are going to fuck with you. Those lower time frames are going to potentially shift structure at all times, but you have to re remember, as per the last video, that the higher time frame is going to control the narrative of the lower time frames and the lower time frames can screw around with you all they want they could play circus animals with you but as long as you don't get 
fully swept in and hypnotized by what's going on on those lower time frames, you're going to be able to follow along with price and still get involved in trades that make you profit. Just like we showed you guys on the FTMO C Trader. Um, so again, this is C Trader. It is not MetaTrader. Don't get confused. Here it is right here. We just showed it. Um, these are the positions that we took on those. If we zoom out, you'll see, if we just move left, you'll see all the positions we took, right? Partial, break even, partial, break even, partial break even, partial break even. And again, they look tiny, but as we get to the lower time frames, those are real profits that you could have potentially been involved in, right? So there you go. Um, we move over to the left, right? These are real profits that you actually catch as price moves to lower areas. Sometimes they won't, sometimes they will, right? And even lower, if we jump to the 30 or 15 seconds when we got involved on these on the lower time frames, you'll see that these are really just moves that look like this, just on a lower time frame. So again, forget time frames. Everything is fractal in this market. Okay. So let's get let's destroy this now. We don't really need it. Let's get back to this. Okay. So we are expecting sells from these areas. Now we don't know if price wants to come into here and then drop. Right? Price can do that. And there's going to be most likely Wyckoff in here, which is what I was looking for to get that drop. Now Prices could come here, drop, and then come higher, and then drop, right? And there could be Wyckoff here that gets us involved in that. Or price could come in here, drop, come in here, shift structure, then come up here to 50%, maybe have another Wyckoff, then drop, right? And maybe then continue all the way to lower lows beyond, um, beyond areas of, sorry, beyond areas of liquidity, like right here. Or price could then come back up, testing more areas in here, like maybe this, this order block right here, right? testing that and then proceeding the drop. So we don't know if this wants to be prolonged. We don't know if they have a lot to mitigate. We have no idea. But what we do know is that until this high, right? Oh, uh, let's get rid of all this. Until this high right here is violated, there is no reason to assume that we are shifting bullish on the lower, on the higher time frames, right? Because the, the one hour is still bearish. The four hour is still bullish, however, because I'm still expecting bullishness, right? Just like I, I think maybe the daily is, is a good bullish. Yeah. So the daily is a good example of that. So let's go back to the daily. Let's get rid of this stuff, right? So daily is a good example. We're very bullish. We're expecting that shift continuation, right? Move down, continuation, move down, continuation. So maybe you could say and argue that the four hour has already shifted bearish, but uh, the reality is the higher time frame is still bullish. The lower time frames are shifting bearish, and we're going to keep expecting that for continuations. Okay. So that area, that last up move before the down move and the areas within it that have the last up moves before the down move function as order blocks in areas of what? Inefficiency and liquidity, where we're going to expect price to come into and trade away from. Okay. Fantastic. So let's get into it. We were on the one minute, I think, or maybe the five minute. Let's get to the one minute and just watch price action. So this was during Asia. I don't really care. Um, again, for a lot of you that ask me, I do not care about time zones, kill zones, um, London, whatever. I don't care about the time frame or the time zone. We've traded on Christmas on Bitcoin. We've traded on holidays. We've traded on the weekends. We've caught trades and great trades with proper trade management on every day and every time of the week. The time does not matter. Price will move more or more um, predictably, potentially, during some of those time zones, but I myself do not use time zones. So again, do not worry about time because I do not care for it. If I'm awake and I'm looking at the chart, I will look to be involved or I will look for opportunities to be involved, right? That doesn't mean I'm always gonna be involved. I've had weeks where um, I literally just don't get involved, either because I'm not watching the charts um, or because there's no like real good setup or because I was working with mentorship students and things like that. So let's watch price, okay? So we're still expecting, right? So as a lot of people are seeing this, even smart money that might've had this area also highlighted as they're seeing this, they're getting scared of missing out. And they're seeing these down moves, these down moves as potentials to go lower. And they're trying to get involved in cells to go even lower without recognizing that what our area has not been entered yet. So there's no point to look for any cells just yet, unless we had a higher time frame shift, right? So this is an example of where lower time frames will start to fuck with you before actually bringing you the proper setup. So let's watch this now, okay? Let's actually get to the chart. Okay, great. So our chart finally jumps up, okay? It jumps up into this area, and at this point, I'm already interested in potentially watching it for what? Sells, because price, like I said, could hit this area, this POI, right, this open, and then instantly drop to completely new lows. We do not know. I think I was on a 30 second. Let's find out, okay? So price comes up into here, okay? Drops off, and remember what we spoke about in the previous videos. You don't have to consider the first impulse into price to be the buying climax. 
it could be the move that happens after it. The impulse it causes now could be the buying climax and it could make your distribution happen in here. And then that huge drop could happen there, right? When this area never gets even traded through. So always be mindful of something like that. This is how lower time frames can screw with you as well, okay? So I think I was on the one minute. I'm not sure. We're gonna have to screw around with this a little bit. Actually, we can take a look at the, um, at the trades we took right here. So we were expecting things at, this was, uh, this was zero USD. We're not gonna pay attention to that. Here we go, we have GJ right here. Yes, so this is where I entered. So it looks like I was on the one minute, but I think 30 seconds might be better to explain this. So let's take a look at the one minute then, okay? Let's go to 30 seconds, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so what do you notice about price? Price comes up to make some kind of buying climax either here or here, right? Notice that. Either one can be considered a buying climax. Comes down to make an AR. So let's say this is the buying climax. Comes down to make the automatic rally right here. Okay, fantastic comes up to make the ST or the UT, right? So remember, uh, th these are nothing more than snowflakes. We're just waiting for the liquidity confirmation, the liquidity graphs that form a um, confirmation in the direction that you wanna go in, okay? ST or UT, and then we're waiting for the liquidation of that, which we get. So again, this could have been now the ST. This right here, this move just above could be the UT, as you can see, right? It goes just above it, so liquidating that area, right? And then you have this move here, which acts as the U tad, okay? So there you go. And you have price get up there, you have price break down, you have it instantly look like it creates a test, you have the breaks down creating order blocks within these areas, those areas being mitigated as per the test, as you can see. So again, uh, forget this right here for a second, we're gonna get rid of that. So again, what's happening in here, this is a snowflake distribution, right? We know that we're expecting distributions from this area. This distribution can happen on a one minute. So on a one minute, it's not as, it's not as clean. On the 15 second, it might be even cleaner, right? So it, 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 it kind of is, right? And if anything, you could, also, you could also look at this, like this, and think about this as the preliminary um, supply, just like that. But, you know, I'm just gonna stick to my original markup, which was buying climax, AR, oops, buying climax, the AR, the ST that made that liquidity, the UT that liquidated that, the UTAD that came through that, and now the tests that are occurring as we're moving lower. And at this point, we were still not sellers on this market, right? Let's go back to the 30 second, right? Now we're waiting for price to break down again to shift and get, do what? Basically make its way below these lows, giving us potentially a sign of weakness before new tests to come even lower. And again, that sell could be the sell that takes us to where those entirely, entirely new lows that we were looking at on the four hour or even lower, right? But that doesn't mean that it has to happen here because what did I say about low time frames? They can be bullish, switch bearish, switch bullish, switch bearish, all within this area and and basically like scam you out of your your entry which is why it's so vital to understand position management if you're trading the lower time frames or even looking for confirmation entries using wyckoff okay so you have that test we have that breakdown right gets right below the ar what is that a sign of weakness right showing us the price most likely wants to get lower let's go to the one minute here just like that okay and at this point, I was still not interested in being a um, a seller. I wanted to see another confirmation of price to break down again. So I wanted to see price break down here again. Give me the buy up to the LPSY. So the buy back up. And then the sell that goes and continues to completely new lows. Okay, does that make sense? So what do we get? Okay, price makes a high. Great. And breaks down. Leaving behind, as you can see, this last up candle before the down move. Right? So it came down, broke the lows, make a, made a high, dropped again left behind this order block and that's the first time i said let's be involved now again what's interesting price comes up to it taps us in and again you could have used the 50 percent, and that same trade would now be worth one to four instead of one to where was the open of this um boom instead of one to 2.5 right but where did i um partial my position right here okay why because theoretically price could go here partial or price could go here and then completely take off now what you also could do the other consideration you have to make is that when price gets here you can also set to break even and not partial so i have a very different way of operating in this market and the way i like to trade i trade differently from most smart money people some smart money people even the ones in my mentorship trade differently from me that doesn't mean that we can't all be profitable if we understand our own strategy and how we are going to use that strategy to be involved Okay, so what do we have? We have price tap into there, give us that LPSY, and then what happens? We partial at the area we were expecting to have price partial at, and we leave ourselves a break even. Now, price can do a number of things, right? So even though I partialed here and secured, what is it, 1.25%, that might not seem like much, 
But 1.25%, again, on a higher capital account is worth a lot of money. 1.25% at 1% risk originally on FTMO is equivalent to $1,250 of secured profit within six minutes or a little bit less actually from here to right here, three minutes. Okay. And now the thing you have to also realize and remember at all times during this, this markup is that if this price did run to those new lows and potentially even lower lows, like we were expecting them to run to these lows here, that same trade is now worth one to 30, right? Just because we locked in that one to three and secured 1.5% does not mean this trade can't continue to one to 30. It can, and that will happen, but it won't happen all the time. When you're operating in smart money, you can't be just in here for those higher R trades. They're not going to happen all the time. You need to make that recognition now before you get carried away and get sad about your little take profits without recognizing that they, those could be worth a lot if you properly understood how to have an account and manage it and manage the capital in it. Okay, great. So let's get back to the lower time frames. Fantastic. So we got involved in this and it turns out that we were actually, um, I believe, yeah, I think it went to trade back above it. So actually it did get lower. So you had another opportunity to partial or to wait a little bit and you could have gotten as low as, I don't even know how low it's got, one to four, right? So again, you had opportunity. At this point, I was at break even looking for these lows and these lows to be taken because those are next points of liquidity in my mind, ultimately, right? So price drops down. And again, actually it makes an entire move all the way to six RR. Now, again, a lot of you might argue the spread idea, right? Like how did you not get stopped on 1.3 pips of spread, blah, 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 stuff, stupid stuff like that. The real, or not stupid, I'm sorry uh, for the people that don't know, but this is C-Trader. C-Trader allows you to set your stop loss using the chart price. So even if there is spread, all you have to do is factor that spread into your actual risk and then let the trade run um, normally because it will only take you out if the chart price, not the spread price, hits your area, right? So as long as the chart price does not hit the stop loss, I will remain in the position. So again, forget the fact that it's this it's 1.3 pip stop loss because this is the same as taking an entry with an 11 pip stop loss or a 100 pip stop loss with a 70 pip take profit or a 700 pip take profit, right? This is the last time I'm gonna say that. I know I get really repetitive and annoying with that, but I need a lot of people to understand that because a lot of people have messaged me and continue still to ask me about that. Now, as price broke down here, I was looking for re-entries where? Well, this breakdown in price, as you can see, happened from this order block here. As you can see so that's where i was looking for sales i actually refined it a little bit on the lower time frame um, i think we might have even used the menta fx block for this entry but we're not going to consider concern ourselves with that right now let's just see what happens so price makes its way back up and gives us that entry right there right and as price goes lower okay so actually price comes back up uh you can see that my partial isn't even at this low my partial is here because of the imbalance that I see. So my partials exist not only at lows, but also sometimes at imbalances. So we can take a look at what happened with this trade. Did it come up after that? Um, so actually it came back down to give you another chance. Actually, I think this is why I partialed here. So I, I actually, um, I'll take that back for one second. So what happened is I wanted to partial at this low or this low originally. However, as price came down, made an intermediary term low and then took off, this indicates to me that we have already built liquidity here now instead of here right so the next point of liquidity really exists here and not here and therefore i wanted to partial here so when price came back i partialed there so i'm sorry i didn't i it wasn't actually because of the order block or the imbalance here um that was on that was on a future trade that we took today um but it was actually on this lows creation and that partial there okay and there we have it so from there we had price come up and we now have caught in two trades that again could have gone to significantly lower prices. So again, forget the fact that these are being locked in at smaller RRs. These trades could have easily both ran to those areas where we were expecting price to run to. These lows, these lows, and potentially those four hour lows. That's already a one to 30. This one's at one to 16. If we ran to even lower, it's about one to 80, one to 90, or even like one to 150. But that's not what we're talking about right now. Right now we're talking about looking for entries to get in on that real down move. So what we've seen happen now is our first snowflake ultimately got invalidated. This this overall Wyckoff schematic was invalidated. Okay, great. So what do we wait for now? The next schematic to play out. So again, forget all of this stuff I have open here. Um, we're going to talk about all that soon. But what happens? Okay, well, now we're following price again. What does it do? So I think I was on a lower time frame here. 
Um, yes, I was. Right? All I'm doing is price is getting back into this area and starting to do what? Potentially print a new snowflake, a new schematic, right? So let's watch it. Potentially, you might have been watching this, right? Buying climax, AR, secondary test, up thrust, right? If price started to break down, you could be involved in new cells in these areas to look for lower prices. But instead, we saw price break through. Okay, great. This is invalidated. We don't care about it, right? This is the importance of waiting and understanding your own strategy. So we have a buying climax, get made an automatic rally. Fantastic. We have this move that comes up to make what? An ST creating equal highs, right? So liquidity is being engineered these areas. We have this move up that makes the UT and then makes the UTAD. So again, this could be a UT and this could be a UTAD, or this could just be the UT slash UTAD, right? Because you have two types of schematics. You have the schematic one, type one, and the type two. Um, we'll talk about that in the future video, but that's what you have right there, right? So again, now what are you looking for? You're looking for the same thing, the breakdowns, the entries, the continuations, right? Same thing over and over again. So we get that breakdown, right? We come up for the test. Now we're looking for the breakdown below this area, okay? So we're waiting for that breakdown. So this is a intermediary term sign of weakness, but it's only the first break. It hasn't confirmed this schematic for me yet. So I get the test, but I don't even want to enter the test. So you could have already entered off of this order block here, right? The last up move before the down move. Okay, you see that? Um, but I was waiting for the for the confirmation. So let's see if we get that. Um, so there we go. Okay, so now what does price do? It creates a sign of weakness, as we've spoken about before, as it makes its way below the AR and below all these liquidity points. So it's showing us that it's shifting lower time frame to be bearish, and we're going to expect bearish moves. However, and again, same thing, this bearish move could be the bearish move that continues to completely new lows. Or, right, or this could be the move that's going to be again traded through and continue higher before shifting again to continue lower we're still in that higher areas order block never forget what the higher time frame was telling you do not start to create a bias because this has shifted bullish right this could be bullish for a while you could actually make some potential you could potentially argue there should be buy opportunities in here and you might be able to buy from here if price came here and you bought right into these areas you could do that but you still have to recognize that that would be counter trend as per the higher time frames because why the higher time frames still control the overall narrative of this market so at this point um, we were looking at the order blocks here to be involved. I wanted my stop loss still to be above the highs because I wasn't sure how this was going to hold ultimately, right? So let's see what happens. Price breaks down even lower. At this point, I didn't know what to do because price technically tested some order block in here, but it didn't come to the area I was expecting it to come to. However, this area was still of interest to me, despite the fact that it didn't come to where I wanted it to come. Okay. Price gets below these lows. So at this point I was like, okay, cool. We got below these lows. Potentially we're ready to start shifting and go significantly lower. That does not mean that we will, right? So what's happening is remember the higher time frames. So as we made that shift, where's the last up candle before the down candle right here, right? So what you have is an order block up here. Okay. And what that means is you can now expect potentially for price to be bullish into this order block before coming to continue that bearish move that does what meets those lower time frame. I mean, higher time frame areas of interest, either here or significantly lower at these points right here, right? Thereby giving you a potential one to 38, right? Again, those higher R's are possible, but you need to recognize that just because the first one doesn't give you it does not mean that the bias switches. We can, we continue to have this bearish bias all the way through all of these trades, right? We only were bullish here and here. Why? Because we were still expecting price to make its way into this area. After price is here, I wasn't looking for buys. I was looking for sells and every sell I took, I wanted the partial because I realized prices could reverse. And I was looking for those continuations lower. That's why you see, um, if we go into here, where is it? Um, I guess we have to go into here again and go into the history. That's why you see a lot of trades that we took, right? We had profit, 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 profit. Then we had small profit, profit, small profit, profit, small profit, big profit, small profit. And it continued over and over again because we recognized that there were areas that you had to partial at and then you had to let it run if it wanted to run. So that same trade that was worth 1 to 1.43 could then be worth 1 to 30, 1 to 60, 1 to 80, 1 to 100. The same trade that was worth 1 to 2.23 or whatever it was, let's see, uh, to this low right here, 1 to 2.5 could have been worth those same RRs, right? So we're again building potentially an 
uh, an area or a cause to go lower, right? So now what am I looking for? Continuations even lower. Now, how can we look for that? Either you can be involved in these order blocks again, look in the partial at lows, or you can again look for confirmation inside of those areas, which is what I was doing. So again, I open it on much lower time frames, but we're looking for these areas to be hit now. So again, that was a sign of weakness on that 15 second, I believe. Yep, right here. And then you had an opportunity to enter right here, but we didn't get that, right? Partially would have taken places at either these lows, at this order block, and potentially these lows here, because they acted as liquidity. And now you would be again, break even on that trade if you were a seller at that point. So what did price do? Price broke down a little bit more. Uh, price even broke down even lower. So again, partials at this low would have been fine. Then price broke above again. At this point, you could have been a buyer potentially, um, as price continued higher, but we weren't looking for that because we're still looking at overall sales. Now, because price went so far, uh, so deep, I wanted to be a seller at this point already. However, because of how low price went and how deep it fell, the odds of this actually holding as a schematic are lower in my mind and they are not in line with my, um, my exact way of entering. So instead, what I did is I waited at this area as instead of an entry, but as a POI, right? So as a, as an order block area, this is, this is now considered an order block right here for potentially what? The same thing we've expected on every single one of these potential um, previous areas, right? We want to see the Binance, AR, the ST, potentially an upthrust, a UTAD, a breakdown, an entry, continuation, partials or break even at that low, continuations that take you all the way down to completely new lows, to the four hour lows or whatever it might be, or that then get liquidated, right? Shift structure and then go higher to mitigate more of that same one hour order block. So again, as we're doing this, you all need to continue to, um, here, let's delete this right here. A lot of you need to continue to remember that we're still operating within this one hour buy to sell candle, this last buy to sell that broke down, right? All of what we've looked at so far is just inside of that area still right? It is still the narrative for the overall play of this market. Okay. We don't know for sure if that first century was going to take us to new lows or if it's going to come higher before taking us to new lows, right? However, let's see what we watched. So I think I was on a lower time from here. Yeah. It looks like I was, um, we had that buying climax, right? High gets made AR. You have a preliminary supply right here. So we can put that in there just like that. You have that preliminary supply, that buying climax, that automatic rally. You have that secondary test right? Making those intermediary term liquidity highs, right? You have this move down that acts as what? A sign of weakness. So again, this right now is not enough for me to be confirmed for a, um, for a white coffee in distribution. Okay. Then we have, as we're having this, I think I already entered, or maybe I waited. I'm not hundred percent sure. I don't remember 100%, but again, what are we doing? We're creating intermediary term liquidity all above this high, right? And this, this schematic here still stands for that same thing. Um, and now we're waiting for potentially what a UT that makes a type two schematic and we can take cells on or a UT UTAD. And then the schematic that we can take cells on expecting what partials break even or completely new lows, right? Same thing. Every single time we get that up thrust. Fantastic. We get that breakdown, right? We get that first breakdown, but it never gets below this low. As you can see, we're just building now liquidity on this bottom side of the market, as you can see, right? So what happens? Um, we come to make this UTAD. Okay. Fantastic. We break down below it. And at this point, I believe I entered this overall position on this cell right here um, with the stop loss just above this high, because I recognize that price still could somehow come to make a new high right now. Notice where the partial is the same area. Okay. So we're just trading the order blocks in here. You can use the, um, oops, you can use the last buy to sell, which is that, or the overall last buy to sell, which I use, which is that with your stop loss, either above this UTAD right here, or right above here. Again, forget the stop loss, um, the pips, because that doesn't really matter. So let's see what price did for us, right? Price comes up. Price is testing this area. I think it goes a little bit higher than the UTAD. I think it does. Yeah. So this becomes a UTAD, right? So in real, uh, this is above this high, like I said, just like that. So again, now we know that the schematic that we were looking at here was a little bit more prolonged. This was the UT in, in actually, this was the sign of weakness. Um, this was the AR something like that, right? But the reality is, so this is just another snowflake as we've looked at, um, here you go. This is your white coffee and snowflake inside of that area. But what's interesting is we actually enter this. I remember now off of this area, um, this overall block though. And we use this as the high 
as the stop loss. So we had already entered as this was playing out. So we didn't enter on this specific thing, but because of the way price was moving here, making new highs and actually getting really close to our area, we recognize that price is most likely not bearish since after it shifted here, it didn't continue, but instead it went higher. So at this point we were almost ready all to take the minus one. I think a bunch of people caught this in the, in the mentorship, but then price did return down, I believe. Um, yep. So as you can see this UT, um, whoops. Oops. This overall thing right here, it did hold um, this red area just like that, right? So if you use this, it didn't hold. If you use this, everything was fine. We had a solid just above here because of the way it moved in here. We partialed instantly at again. What did we talk about a second ago? So let's um, zoom back into this. We partialed again at one RR. 1.14. So we only locked in 0.5% of that position, went to break even, and then let this run. Now, the thing is, as we've spoken about before, that 0.5% could be equal to $500 of an FTMO account, could be 5,000 on a bigger account, could be 50K, so on and so forth, right? It's all about understanding that the capital or what capital you have and the leverage you're able to use and the lot size you're able to um, trade at with proper risk management um, will decide how big that 0.5% is. And then this same trade is going to run to where? Potentially these partials here at one to four, so another two RR, or to those complete lows, just like we were expecting at the four hour ones, right? Letting you run to 33 RR, thereby locking in 15%, which is, which is a lot better. Um, but you also recognize that price can do a few things. And again, we're partially more now because we're seeing that this is happening multiple times in area, right? We've already had one, um, two, three, Wyckoff setups within these areas, right? So here's another Wyckoff setup that you had, and this is the one we traded. So again, um, as we're working through this, I'm working backwards through this. We were we were all like going crazy on it as we were um, doing it in the Discord. So you can see those right, where were they? Um, where were they? This is GJ, not there. Um, this was that original one where we locked in, let stuff run, right? So not even to break even, we locked in highs, as you can see. Um, kept playing this through. Right, looking for more potential entries, uh, partialing along the way. As you can see, those are the ones we showed you on C Trader in this in this video or in the previous one. Right, as we kept going, we already partialed at those lows, so this was fine. Um, and then as we continued, you can see there was that exact same schematic that you just saw with the cell that we were looking at. Now, because of how deep it fell, that cell changed to waiting a little bit. Um, and what you'll see is. We can go find this. Yeah, right here. You can see that that's that same thing we just drew, right? We were wrong about this UTAD. It went a little bit higher and then it came down to hit the partials at these lows, right? So we can scroll down and there it is. Um, you had that UTAD get created and we had that partial, the partials met here. And then we were looking for continuations um, lower. Now instead, right, price didn't want to do that. So what happened instead? Now, because of everything that's occurring, this is a very low time frame. And at this point, it's time to zoom out because you have a lot of things that are happening in this area on this low time frame. So at this point, I think I went to the four minute. And what you'll start to notice is that that four minute is starting to act as its own schematic. So again, remember, we're in that area and we're mitigating it. But now on the four minute, it's creating a larger schematic. And what you'll see now is that those setups that we were able to take with those mini partials and those proper trade management areas were actually the 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 parts of a higher time frame schematic so that distribution was a part of the higher time frame buying climax that accumulation down here is a part of the higher time frame um by climax automatic rally that distribution that we caught here and then we recaught here was actually part of the st or the up thrust of the four minute distribution and this accumulation here was a sign of weakness and this test was actually a test of creating more liquidity before potentially doing what going higher so what happens right price breaks down a little bit and goes higher. So now what did we start to see? We started to see that all those areas that we just traded ultimately and price didn't want to respect and continue to drop to those, to those completely new lows as we were expecting and potentially even lower lows and potentially even lower lows as the four hour. What we started to see was it began to create a higher time frame schematic, right? Buying climax, automatic rally, secondary test, up thrust, UTAD, right? Potentially sign of weakness, entry criteria, met, sells. You guys see that? So again, we're having the exact same thing that we just traded on the 15 second and 30 seconds happening on a higher time frame because like I said, 
the higher time frames control the lower time frames, but the lower time frames will help make the higher time frames have confirmation and entries that you can see to get into. And this is what I mean by the market is extremely fractal. Everything happens in a very, very, very fractal nature on this entire market. So now let's speed it up a little bit and we'll see, um, we'll see this right here, right? Here's that four minute. We saw this high get made, right? So where's that high that got made? This is this high, as you can see, this high right here. So we saw that as a UTAD, right? So what are we starting to see? There's a schematic right here, right? So all those mini schematics were part now of this major schematic. So always, always keep in mind those higher time frames, almost essential to understanding this. Now, why it's important? Because now for other smart money traders, I want to make this a point right now, this order block here with this structural continuation continuation would for some people be a great buy opportunity because they're expecting what continuations but they don't recognize that what the higher time frames are still controlling the lower time frames and we are tapping into more of the mitigation of this higher time frame and we could easily see price break through this and people will wonder why they're order blocked and hold but it's because they didn't add on the confirmation of understanding where order flow is actually headed. So now what's interesting is all those areas we traded and made money on off of the mini partials off the trade management um, are now becoming the part of a bigger um, of a bigger schematic. So let's actually draw this out a little bit, right? So we have the buying climax. Let's actually give it a little bit of a background, even a border maybe so we can see it better, right? There we go, something like that. So we have the buying climax, right? The automatic rally. So let's actually use this AR, the ST. Okay, yeah, cool. So the ST right here, right? The UT at these highs, right? That makes all these intermediary term highs, as you can see. The UTAD, oops, right? As you can see, UT uh, making intermediary highs, UTAD. And at this point, what were we doing? Instead of anticipating this structural play to continue off this order block, we were anticipating to wait for this to break, to get involved on the cells that would take us to completely lower prices, okay? So what happened? Prices um, broke down a little bit, created an order block. You can see that I use that as an area of interest, why? Because as we're coming lower, we're breaking down. So notice this, if you were a buyer at this order block and you did it properly, there's most likely a mini fractal accumulation in here that you could have caught that you would have properly mitigated and partial that on your way higher because on a lower time frame, this area here will look like this, right? Lower prices, potential small accumulation, higher prices, partial or BE, right? Continuation, failure. And that's this failure right here. But this is still a viable and valid trade inside there. So there's a lot of things that are going on in price here. That's why I say that one, um, one currency pair is enough to look at because of even you can see how much is surpassing in one area. So we finally get that break below this area, which means that we're starting to shift. We're seeing that breakdown. We're seeing an intermediary term sign of weakness. And we have this order block here, right? That last up move before the down move with imbalance in it. So what are we going to expect in this area? Sells, right? Sells to get down, right? And now if we want to do that, how are we going to do that? Well, we have to either look for confirmation in here or sell it outright. Now, we're not sure this schematic has fully played out yet. The only way we can make sure is if we see this is maybe like a test. We see maybe breakdown, breakdown, finally breaks down past everything and gives us a sign of weakness. And then we can look at this as a completed schematic almost and see cells now from those areas. But we're not confirmed about that yet. So we're going to look for what? Um, confluence. So we're looking for this to occur, right? As you can see, we had that drawn out. That's the same thing. Break down below, break above. Let's draw this out. As you can see, we had this drawn out too, right? We have we're waiting for that breakdown, looking for a Wyckoff, and looking for the entry on the confirmation that forms inside that area. So we had this all drawn out. We had this all sent out. Okay. Let's scroll down a little bit. And as you can see, I actually sent this by when we were in drawdown. So you guys know that you know. <laughs> We, we didn't send this after it was in profit. We sent this buy when it was, uh, when we sent the sell when it was already in drawdown fully, okay? So, and then you can see um, that we partialed at the low right here, right? And here's that, that same thing, right? So that's that same setup, um, the partial at the low. So there was a little bit of spread. So we were only able to partial a little bit, which is fine. Um, and then we wanted to let it run for the potentially that low, which would be a one to 50 trade, right? Just like that. All right. Okay, cool. So was this just now? Um, yeah, okay, cool. Very nice, very nice. So what happened? 
Let's get down to the one minute. Let's play this out, right? So price already got below here. We're already looking for potential sells in these areas here because we recognize price can get up into here and give us a sell opportunity, okay? So price heads up into this area, gives us our confirmation structural play, gives us an entry. We get out of partials. Um, I think it continues even lower. We're at break even at this point, I believe, and we're looking for more partials down here, right? So again, we can differentiate what's actually going on here if we really want to get crazy about it. I think we entered on this not even using Wyckoff. We, I believe we entered on this just using normal structure. However, um, I wouldn't be surprised if we could find normal Wyckoff in here. Yeah, so as you can see, it's right here. It's available. Um, your snowflake distribution did occur indeed, right? But we didn't even get involved using Wyckoff, but here it is for those that are really interested and only want to trade Wyckoff, right? You have your buying climax, you have your automatic rally, you have your secondary test or secondary test right here, right? I'll just use this one probably. Equal highs being created. Those get liquidated with a UT. You don't know if this is going to hold. You have this breakdown. You have this test. Um, and actually, you wouldn't have been able to get in on this using Wyckoff unless you got in on the retests of this block here. Okay? Or some of the blocks in here, like this one or something. Um, maybe off the lower time frame, we can take a quick look. Um, no, ultimately, this was a full-on structural play. Um, that's why we partialed very early as well. So what we saw here is you can maybe go in yourself and try to find the proper Wyckoff, but this was based on just structure alone. So sometimes if I just see structural plays, I will get involved in them um, without the Wyckoff, but usually I only get involved with the Wyckoff, right? So we go and find the actual trade right here. Where was it? Off of a, oh, so it was off of 32nd. You can see it was off of this up move to the down move, and we were looking to trade off of the order blocks that lay in here. We didn't know which one to use, so we just used kind of the entire area. Um, and use a stop loss above that area. And then as price continued lower, we showed you the partials. Partials were met. And as price broke down even lower, um, stop loss at mini take profit. Oops, what was this? Uh, let me go find that really quick. Stop loss at the mini take profit. Yeah, so stop loss, I moved just below this area and I was letting it run. Secured some more RR, as you can see. So more partials were taking at these lows. Um, and I think after that, yeah, after that it stopped out, okay? So as you can see this play out, we took a little bit more profit at those lows, wherever that was. Yeah, so right here. So we took partials back here, we took some more partials here, and then we got stopped out on this trade, I believe, right after that. Oh, no, 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 we took partials right here. I think off this. Let's go take a look real quick, just so we can be correct about this. Um, it was a 15 minute. And the partial was taken at these lows here. Okay, so let's go to the 15 minute, just like that, right? Yep, right here. So just at above these highs, because this could have been like an order block that could have held and then continued. So that I took partials right there. So that same trade, right, went one to nine, right? Now, again, after we took partials, we were at break even. Now, this trade, again, like we've spoken about before, could have been the one that ran to these lows, giving us that one to 23, and then could have ran to those lows here, giving us the one to 54. Um, or even to the four hour areas where we were expecting buys from at those areas there, which would have given us that one to 100, right? Otherwise, we are fine with securing the RR, the percentage that we were able to lock in on that trade. Same things apply over and over again within this one area. This is all still based off of that 15 minute or that one hour order block, um, which is all part of this down move that we're expecting mitigation to continue con like way lower, right? Everything holds true and holds the same way. So we let that run. I think I slept through this. Um, and the next day we came back to this. Okay. So this stopped us out at mini take profit or at break even, whatever it was after we already partialed. So that was the profit made on that. And you guys all see that in this, um, in this little history breakdown of the last uh, two days. So basically 2nd of February and 3rd of February, you can see all those trades here, um, how we got involved and how we took them out, right? It was all there. Fantastic. And now What's interesting about everything that happened here? Well, what's interesting about everything that occurred is that all these minor um, fractal distributions and this distribution here was all part of an actual major distribution, which we can now see right here. Okay. And what I mean by that is again, consider this as that area we're looking for entries at. If we waited on a higher time frame, look what just had happened, right? We had made the buying climax, the automatic rally, the secondary test, a, a maybe a sign of weakness, an upthrust, potentially another sign of weakness, a UTAD, and now we're making a sign of weakness. So what are we gonna expect? The move back up that wants to test this area, right? Before we see lower prices generated. So when I woke up and saw this out, 
it wasn't that our bias changed or anything like that. All that happened is we said, okay, we were looking to test 50% of that one hour order block, right? We can see that with how this order block got created, right? That up move before the down move. And what were we doing? We were using this now as our order block. And because it's so big, again, you can look to be in as a buyer at this area already, if you want, I mean, as a seller at this area already, or at this area, or you could refine it to this area, right? Or you could refine it to this area, whatever it might've been. Or you can look inside here for the same things that we looked at inside of all these areas. So now you guys are seeing how all these fractal distributions that we traded that we were potentially expecting those new lows to be made by were actually part of a higher time frame, the four minute distribution, which was actually just part of an even higher time frames snowflake distribution. Right, so that was part of this higher time frame distribution right here. So you can see what we sent out. Um, where was it in the Discord? Where was it? Um, so again, for those of you that don't know, um, all of this and everything that I offer is available here. This is the only place and the only thing that I'm ever going to offer. I'm putting this because there's a lot of people that are scamming, um, and you can join the Discord through this. It's a paid membership, of course, um, and that's it. So let's get back to this. So what was it that was sent out this morning then? As you can see, this is what was sent out. Uh, we recognized that that high was actually part of a distribution, right? And we were expecting that sign of weakness to come and test this area and then break down. Now notice what happened, okay? Let's talk about <clears throat> the idea of buying to sell and selling to buy. So we come and we finally make that sign of weakness that does what? It breaks down below new structural lows. So what are we gonna expect? continuations that want to break down even more lows because what we're doing is as we're putting in lows a lot of the time liquidity is being there's more liquidity under all these lows because what's happening is people are starting to try to catch bottoms and that's when emotions are used to our advantage because every time we go up we know that it's for the purpose of re-entering new positions to go short to take out those people um that are still trying to buy and trying to stack into their entries at these areas because there are people stacking into buys here 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 all the way up into here with stop losses that will be here or stop losses that are here that they increase these areas they become more emotional thereby giving us more area and liquidity that we can go um to liquidate basically as a composite man or as an institution right so part, so price comes up into this area and gives us that test um you can see we were on the five minute we were here right we get that test and we have the breakdown in price. Now, as we have this breakdown, we're forming an order block, right? So now we've made that OB 2.0 rule. Okay, so there's an OB in here. So this is how I view the market every day. This is how I this is how I get involved. So let's see what happens. We make we come up and we test it, right? And from there, what do we do? Price breaks down again, as you can see. So now the lower time frame, the five minute, has now shifted from bullish to bearish, expecting what? continuations now those continuations can happen from two places from either the last buy candle before the sell so this area here you can see we highlighted that or the last buy before the sell so there's two areas that could happen at now this is where the idea of what's the order block that's going to hold comes into play okay and what i mean by that is you don't know if this area or this area is going to hold and what you'll see is when i sent this out we were looking for sales from here or from here, we weren't sure, which is why confirmation becomes a very, very, very important key element. So what we'll do is we'll highlight this order block here, okay? And what we're also gonna do is highlight this order block here, just like that. And now we're gonna watch it on the lower time frame, just like I did, okay? So price drops down and comes up into this area. Now, when price starts coming up into this area, I was on a very low time frame, I believe, notice how we have no confirmation of anything in here, right? So I got even lower, I think. And I said, okay, potentially this could be a preliminary supply or buying climax, and this could be a buying climax or ARST. But in reality, if this breaks, it's invalidated. And if this gets invalidated, I'm going to wait for this area to be hit. Okay. So that's what we were expecting, or that's what we were operating under. Okay. So price comes up and breaks through it. This place is invalidated. The only thing I care about at this point is if this gets hit and gives us that exact same setup. And notice, again, I'm going to scroll down. This was invalidated before it gave us any setup. This was a five second chart. And instead, when price came into this five second area right here, which we're about to look at, it gave us those opportunities to enter. And that's the cell we caught the same way we caught the other ones. And what I mean by that is we were on a five second. Again, forget the fact that we're looking at a five second chart. Remember, this is that area, that order block. And again, the five seconds don't control this area. This area is going to control the five seconds. And if the five seconds line up, 
we can get involved in shorts to get lower. So what happens? Okay, price is coming up. Price is not tapped into our area yet. Again, we are not interested in this because it hasn't tapped into where we want it to tap into yet. Waiting to tap in, waiting to tap in, nothing at all yet. Okay, price finally starts to make a increase or it starts to bullishly move into this area. So again, what happened all this time, price was bullish, 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 shifted bearish. If you were dumb smart money or getting even emotional about this, you might have already started to get involved in shorts here, here, or even here. Seeing this down move off of this order block and getting trapped, right? Again, forget the five second, these type of moves happen on all time frames, And a lot of smart money has been trapped by these exact same moves, okay? PSY gets formed, buying climax gets formed. We're still not entered on this trade, just so you guys know. Buying climax got formed. AR got formed, ST got formed, and at this point, UT gets formed. Okay, fantastic. The UT gets formed, and what happens? Price breaks down, giving us that intermediary sign of weakness. At this point, we're already looking to be interested in this, okay? And what I mean by that is, you'll see, you could have waited too, I'm pretty sure. So price finally breaks down and gives us that move below the AR. What does that count as? That sign of weakness and the confirmation of, of our... Um, of our thing where's the last buy to sell well technically it is up it's technically this move right here or even if you want to get crazy this move right here right so you could be a seller at these areas and we were already a seller at this point right and what you'll see is i'll play this out a little bit faster right there you go price comes up into that last buy to sell comes back up into that general area where we were looking to sell at with our stop loss just above the high recognizing that this is our distribution within all those areas and now we were looking to take it lower now just because it's going lower does not mean we didn't partial, okay? And what I mean by that is notice how my first partial was already taken at a very, very quick low, okay? So actually my first partial was, I believe, at this low right here, right there, right? There you go. And that partial itself was already at, um, zoom out here, zoom out a little bit more, at one to 3.2, right? So it's a fine partial. And now what's interesting about this is now you can let that same trade, right, that we just entered off the five second, as you can see, nothing changes. We waited for a distribution inside the order block, which was inside, let's go out a little bit, so this is gonna be interesting, which was inside the order block that created the test, which was part of the larger time frame distribution that was part of all those distributions that happened prior. And we're looking for the cells off that still with the bearish idea in mind because we're trading off of that same biased area that has not been invalidated and broken yet. So our validation for this area still stands and our higher time frame area will form the narrative for what we're going to look for and do on the lower time frames. And as we continued, as you guys can all see, um, this is up till now basically. Price continued lower, continued lower. Um, we locked in this high right here, right? And price has just stopped us out at this high right here at one to 14. And otherwise, I mean, and we partialed along the way as well, of course, um, especially at this area right right here. This area we partialed out as well. So um, I can kind of I kind of move you guys through a little bit of that. As you can see, we started to fall lower. Um, we were melting, melting. Look for this as a partial. Look for this as a partial, right? Um, here are the partials being taken along the way. Uh, we wanted it to go even lower to these four hour areas, which would then be one to 80, right? The same thing that we just spoke about. Um, we're potentially looking for re-entries. However, that never gave us a chance because we never got back up to that area. Prices were up one to 30 at some point where people could have partialed very easily. Um, we had re-entry POIs. This one, we, we had a, actually a video that we were talking about. Um, we didn't have a chance to get in or look at this, but it never gave us an entry. And price then stopped us out just above this high. And that was how you guys basically saw the formulation of this week's opportunities, right? And this is how one area stood as the basis. Well, actually a four hour overall a, um, analysis or even like a daily bullish analysis with the idea that price needs to come lower, with the idea that as it comes lower, it has to come higher, with the idea that it's going to distribute and as it distributes, it's gonna have multiple distributions within it with proper trade management, is going to give you a variety and number of entries fractally if you understand how your own strategy and refinement works. So hopefully it's made a lot of sense to you guys. Um, hopefully you take something out of this. Um, leave a like if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. And thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time.